May the force be with you. This is going to be a physical SEC football game, and, and that's what it was. But just so happy for our fans and so happy. So, so happy for our players. Um, On the muff punt, obviously a really close call that was overturned. I mean, what what was what was said to you? On, yeah, on I, I don't know. I mean, it's that he touched it. We did not come here to lose by seven. We came here to win the game, and I think you could see that by the way that we played. We just ran into a team that was seven points better than us tonight, and. It'd be hard to look at the Arkansas Razorbacks and not be proud of the effort and the resiliency that we showed tonight and the physicality. Uh, he's, I think he's gotten better and better. He's, I mean, here's a bug. He's had the ability to do it in practice. Welcome in to the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Braddon. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And flying solo on this episode, had a great guest lined up. Fell through last minute. Couldn't get Cousin Shane on the line, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging because we got news and notes from around the league. It's rivalry week. Rivalry week. Why? That's so hard to say, but it's rivalry week here in the SEC. We got players and coaches talking trash. We got news out of Gainesville. Uh Uh-oh, possibly a new coach getting hired rather quickly. So uh, let's just start right there. The hottest rumors in the SEC, oh, Louisiana, Billy Napier. Could he be headed down to Gainesville? That, nothing official as of this recording here on uh, 8 o'clock at Monday night, but odds were posted. Again, you never put too much weight into what a uh, coaching odds are, but Billy Napier opened as the favorite at 4-1, to one, and I that shifted down to little less than two to one, a little after being posted, and now that's off the board. Now, what that usually means is uh, decisions have been made. They don't want any more money coming in. So, hey, that's just something to consider. But let's throw up these odds from sportsbetting.ag. These were the lines as they came out. Like I said, Billy Napier debuted four to one. Again, that came down to less than two to one there before these odds got taken down. Lane Kiffin, five to one. Mario Cristobal, the Oregon coach, 6-1. to one. Bob Stoops, former Oklahoma coach, 8-1. to one. James Franklin, the Penn State coach, also 8-1. to one. As is Mark Stoops, Kentucky coach. Luke Fickle, Cincinnati coach. Eric Benami. I don't know how to say his name, but I know he's the Kansas City offensive coordinator, 12-1. to one. Matt Campbell, the Iowa State coach, 12-1. to one. Bill O'Brien, 16-1. to one. Dan Quinn, former Falcons coach coach former Florida Gator defensive coordinator I believe 16 to 1 and old Dave Kloss and Wake Forest head coach there 16 to 1 so you know put as much stock as you want into into coaching odds and things of that nature but that's just interesting it's particularly interesting that they've been taken off the board that means something's going on behind the scenes and as soon as uh, there's something official hell we, we may have to do another emergency pod here uh, because the Gators may be closing in on their next head coach. And speaking of Billy Napier, the only reason I'll be rooting against that, come to find out here on Monday, coach has got me blocked on Twitter. <laughs> Not that I really care, but uh, if he ever tweets out anything important, I'll be left here in the dark here on the uh, Twitter machine. So, well, speaking of coaching rumors, right before we hopped on the show as well, our buddy Glenn Gilbo down there in Baton Rouge been covering LSU Tigers, I think for about as long as they've had a program down there. But uh, he writes for Outkick now, and he's reporting that Dave Aranda, Billy Napier, and Matt Campbell, the Iowa State coach, could be announced late this week or early next week, according to two sources. So, man, the rumor mill's getting going here. Who knows? L- LSU, Florida might both be after old Billy Napier, Dave Aranda, that's some uh, Jordy Collada we've also had on the show. He does an outstanding job down there. He, I believe it was on Monday, he said Dave Aranda or Billy Napier were the two names it was down to as well. So, hey, LSU, Florida, both racing towards getting a coach. And speaking of, uh, you know, one candidate that's been rumored for both, he's got a game this week, but uh, old Mark Stoops down there in Kentucky 
he was asked about uh, all the speculation, him being con- connected with all these jobs. He didn't do much to kind of silence that. He, he kind of went the opposite approach of Ojimbo. So let's kick it over to Mark Stoops. Listen to what he said on Monday. Recruiting. What's your message to guys right now as your name keeps getting attached to other jobs out there? I mean, it, my relationship is strong with the with the prospects, and, and it always will be. And you know, I, I I can't control that. I have no control over that. I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't want that out there. I don't want that distraction. I don't ask for that. Um, as I mentioned jokingly weeks ago, when somebody mentioned that, I mean, I'd rather it be that than you you guys all talking about when they're gonna fire me. You know, so um, I could only control you know trying to win and build a program here and I've been I think we all can understand I've been nothing but committed to doing that here and plan on doing that all right so hey maybe this is just his way of uh, answering the question I'm not certainly saying Mark Stoops is going to be one of these coaches that takes over here or that he's leaving Kentucky anything like that but interesting uh, that he kind of worded it the, the way he did whereas we've seen Lincoln Riley kind of come out something similar while Jimbo has you know downplayed all the speculation that uh, he would be leaving Texas A&M. So I just thought that was interesting. But, hey, we'll get you the news when we get it with the coaching rumors and speculation and all that. But, uh, again, it's rivalry week here. And I want to preview a couple of these matchups, give a little thoughts on uh, some of these. And I'm just going to focus on the two that we've got here on Thursday and Friday. Going to wait for Cousin Shane to break down more of these matchups on Saturday. But I did want to show – uh, this little clip from uh, our buddy Jacques Doucet down there in Baton Rouge. He was interviewing uh, Damone Clark, LSU's outstanding linebacker, and he had him some words here for uh, Texas A&M and, uh, and Jimbo. Whether you beat Texas A&M or not next week, this oh, we're going to beat Texas A&M. Okay. There you go. You're going right. be... Well, this may be Coach O's last week, even if you win. I mean, I'm just, I'm just grateful for the opportunity that Coach O gave me. You know, Coach O. You know, he, even when he came to my house for recruiting, and everything he said, you know, it, it came true. And I'm just forever grateful for everything he did for me. All right, so, I, hey, this is what we love about Rivalry Week, man. Back and forth, talking trash, that's what makes it fun. And speaking of, we had more trash because uh, Will Levis there, holding down his uh, – <laughs> he's doing the L down there uh, on social media. I thought this was fantastic. I'll throw it up the the clip here, but uh, he's even changed his bio. No L's in his bio. All all the L's all the L's currently in his bio are upside down. <laughs> Looking forward to another great week of preparation. Excited to be part of this rivalry. Let's go BBN. Every L in that sentence turned upside down. So, hey, this is what's great about college football. You just don't get this type of stuff in the NFL. And another thing you don't really get. <laughs> is uh, week in and week out, everybody complaining about the referees. And that is something that uh, Bo Nix, hey, give him credit. It's not often you hear an active player going out here and bashing the referees, but he was watching Arkansas and Alabama over the weekend. Uh, This is an interview he did with uh, our buddy Jim Dunaway, friend of the show, on his show, The Next Round. Let's kick it over to Bo Nix, who calls out some Alabama bias here. With, you were able uh, to watch SEC the Bama game and, and Bryce Young throwing for 7,000 yards and Alabama needing every <laughs> one of them? Yeah, I did. And um, just also saw the uh, Arkansas almost did the same thing. Yeah. Um, and just a few of those obviously controversial calls that, that were in that game um, it just raises, raises some questions for sure, um, I guess, unless you're an Alabama fan. Um, but that's just – part of the game um we've we've discussed it over and over and over we have um, yes and, and that that's that's not going to change no matter what happens um but it was it was a good game for sure i'll give you a chance to try to to um to elaborate or or not comment on on your on your previous comment but you're not you're not insinuating alabama gets calls by the sec <laughs> officials or anything right i think there's i mean legitimately i think you can watch the game and anybody unbiased will think um, that that something is is different, um, but I mean it is what it is. Um, it's kind of how it's always been, um, but that's part of the game. And, and they have good players. You can't take that All away. Right, from so them. I mean, credit Bo Nix for coming out and saying this. Of course, as soon as I put this out there, every Arkansas fan and their mother said, "Well, hell, <laughs> they cheated to help him last year." 
the uh, kettle, the pot ca- calling the kettle black over here with uh, Bo Nix. But hey, he's on your side on this one. No need to attack the man. I have uh, felt the wrath of uh, the Razorback Nation here lately, and man, they uh, they unleash it on you if they have the opportunity, and they did here on Monday, even though Bo was agreeing with them. But like I said, interesting that uh, you know we're not. It's not just the fans. It's not just the players. It's not just the coaches. I mean, it's everybody recognizing these uh, incompetent referees that we got here in the SEC. Something's got to be done about it. Uh, particularly, it's bad when one of your star players in the conference is making note of it and alleging some SEC bias. But all right, on with the games here this weekend. The Egg Bowl on Thursday, Thanksgiving. Cannot wait for this epic showdown. The winner clinches the SEC number two spot behind only Alabama. Games in Starkville. Supposed to be a little bit cold for this one. And just given the recent history, this thing could get ugly, could get nasty. There's always something that you don't anticipate in the rivalry. I know last year it was kind of it was a little ho-hub because uh, you know they held had it all out of order due to the COVID season. Wasn't the tail end of the season, wasn't the fans, wasn't the passion there. We're gonna get those cowbells clanging. It's gonna be intense. And the coaches are saying all the right things. Lane Kiffin's been pumping up Mike Leach for weeks. You got to think there's some gamesmanship there. Just uh, <laughs> let uh, he doesn't want any ammo for Mississippi State when uh, they come down to Starkville to play this game. But you know, it got me thinking going back and watching this Vanderbilt game and just how poorly Ole Miss played in this one. I'm wondering if they're holding things back and went a little bit vanilla for. The Commodores, of course, I mean, there's a, there's enough tape on the Rebels and everything they're trying to do, but I would say the same thing about Mississippi State last week against Tennessee State. Didn't have to show hardly anything. Of course, Mike Leach's uh, offensive playbook is notably and well known to be very small. They're basically running the same couple of plays over and over. They just run them to perfection, and which makes this matchup even more intriguing, given the fact that uh, – both these teams, they didn't have a bye last week, but they kind of, it kind of felt like they did with uh, Vanderbilt and Tennessee State being the opponents for each of them heading into this Egg Bowl. But it was pretty weird. Speaking of a little bit of animosity here, Lane Kiffin, he caught a little bit because he spoke so highly of Mike Leach and noted the fact that just because you go to a different school don't mean you have to hate hate somebody. Hey, as popular as Lane Kiffin is in that state, particularly obviously in Oxford, these comments can't get on board with them because, uh, hey, that's what makes the SEC and all these rivalries great. We hate one another, especially when we have to play them. So uh, let's kick it over to Lane Kiffin, who tries to downplay the toxicity in this rivalry and talks up uh, Mike Leach and the Mississippi State Bulldogs yet again. You've talked a lot about Leach's passing offense, just for it to have been as successful it has for 20, 30 years now, what is it that enables him to keep thriving without having to adjust, it seems? It really is amazing. It kind of goes against what you would think. You know, I think there was a thought out there amongst a lot of people, including coaches, that, you know, the SEC had kind of figured it out last year and they had slowed down, um, you know, had slowed them down there throughout the parts of the year. And then, um, you know, obviously that wasn't the case because now they're right back to where they started a season to go like that LSU game, leading the country in passing offense. So it really is amazing because you would not think you'd be able to be so simple in what you do and you continue to work. Obviously, a rivalry game, emotional. Um, there have been some moments in this rivalry that maybe you know penalties caused because of emotion and had some pretty drastic effects. Is that something that you have to – address with the team to, to kind of keep emotions in check, but still, you know, obviously be passionate. Yeah. And we'll do that as we get closer, you know, um, to the game where it's fresher in their mind, you know, to control their emotions, um, you know, in this type of game and, and don't be the team that makes those mistakes. Since, uh, you and Leach arrived at the respective schools, the toxicity of this game maybe seems to have waned a little bit. Uh, can you just kind of categorize your relationship with Mike Leach and uh, what you think of him? You know, I don't think I knew the toxicity as you refer to it. I mean, I had heard about it here or there, the, you know, recruiting issue, the time with the kid and all that. But, um, 
you know, so someone said it the other day, like, <clears throat> we kind of don't make sense to be here, Leach and I, that we, like, get along. And so, um, you know, maybe we were brought here to bring a state together or something, get you guys to get along. It is football, you know, so you really shouldn't hate people just because they went to a certain school. But um, I like him. I've always liked him. He's funny. Um, does a great job wherever he's been. And I do think it's amazing, like, there are questions that you can – really not evolve most i've said it before usually when you don't evolve and you don't keep up with the game you get fired you know and you get passed by you know that's why people ain't huddling running eye formation football any, anymore for the most part you know um and somehow he came up with something a long time ago that just keeps working all right then on the flip side of it mike leach one player that uh, he is happy to see just one more time, that'd be old Matt Corral. He's eager to see what he can do in the NFL, as you'd expect. But a lot on the line here. Maybe SEC Coach of the Year honors on the line here. I know that's a hot topic right now, but that could fizzle for Lane Kiffin, and it could certainly get Mike Leach some votes here if they're able to get this W here and beat the Ole Miss Rebels and will certainly improve both of these teams bowl positions potentially i mean Ole miss may be looking at a trip to the sugar bowl if they can win this one who knows where mississippi state would be going if they win but you got to think they're going to get a ideal destination if they can win this game against uh, the number eight team in the country a little elevate the mississippi state bulldogs way into the polls of course last year Ole miss won at home it was a hotly contested matchup if i recall Ole miss kept going for it on fourth down and Several times in the red zone, didn't convert. Mississippi State about to score a touchdown throw was a pick six. That was really the key difference in the game. Uh, this year, both these teams a lot better than they were last year. So, you know, that one was back and forth. This one should be nationally televised. Cannot wait. Will the cold affect Mississippi State? Uh, Mike Leach ain't buying none of that talk. Hey, Mike, what kind of stands out to you about that? What, what that lane offense does with, with Matt Corral and, and kind of, you know, obviously they're, they're kind of run a pass heavy, but they can run a lot too. Uh, go, I like the Corral's kind of the key to it. You know, he uh, <clears throat> figures out who to deal the ball to, throws it pretty well, and then, uh, and then uh, <clears throat> you know, hands it off and runs it himself. So it'll be exciting to see, uh, you know, uh, what he does there in the NFL. Hey, Mike, uh, you went through the Egg Bowl already once last year. Uh, what were your thoughts on – it kind of goes back to what you just said here, but what are your thoughts on the overall rivalry and how does it compare to the kind of the Apple Cup and other rivalries that you've uh, been a part of in the past? Uh, I'd say it's similar. It's uh, um, <clears throat> probably a little closer to what it was, uh, Texas Tech versus uh, A&M, but, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just good to be in stands where you're not looking at paper cutouts, you know. And uh, so it's a lot better year and a lot more exciting that way. Coach, you've, you've coached in a lot of rivalry games. How do you help your players maybe manage the emotions of games like this? Well, really, they should <clears throat> handle it the same, you know, as you get, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a really good team-driven locker room. You should uh, – everybody should be on the same page, avoid the noise, and just worry about uh, being the best player and best team that we can be, you know. I, you know, I don't mess with the RPO so much. Uh, I haven't found that it did, you know, whether you're playing like the likes of Utah, Colorado, or somebody like that, you know, as long as you have footing, if you have good footing. Cold, cold weather does it. I mean, heck, they came up with uh, a lot of the concepts, uh, <clears throat> you know, started uh, at Green Bay, uh, Montana, uh, you know, BYU, and, uh, and, and, of course, San Francisco 49ers, which uh, anybody that's never been to Candlestick Park on a cold day, I mean, you know, that's just a mess, and it's in a swamp there, too. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, this, this – well, and then you go back to Cincinnati and uh, some of the passing concepts and stuff guys like Sid Gilman did uh, – uh, no, it's, it was in cold weather first. All right, and then uh, the game here on Black Friday, 
Arkansas, Missouri, is it a rivalry? Is it a rivalry? Well, the fans of Arkansas say it's not. The coaches say it is. <laughs> Missouri certainly thinks it is. Eli Drinkwitz thinks it is. And the fact that uh, Arkansas has lost six in a row, this has got to be arguably the most uh, embarrassing streak on the Razorbacks over their head right now. Uh, the fact that they cannot get over the Missouri Tigers. And again, much like we've been saying all season with the Razorbacks, this is going to be the best team entering into this matchup since the streak began. And a lot of pressure, I think, on Sam Pittman and company to get this thing. They're huge favorites in this game. They're playing at home. Everyone's expecting them to snap the streak coming off that impressive performance against Alabama. Yet, Mizzou, I think, is playing with house money here. They've got confidence that they can beat this crew. They've got a team riding a wave of momentum, won two big games in a row. Now they've punched their ticket to the postseason, looking to extend this streak over Arkansas, looking to extend their streak going into the postseason. This, uh, you know, don't overlook Missouri here with Tyler Beatty. And, hell, they're doing it with an injured quarterback. The defense has bounced back. Now can the Arkansas Razorbacks on a short week get up after – you know, a disappointing result in Tuscaloosa. Sam Pittman says, uh, you know, they're hitting the ground running. Another good uh, addition here. We got a six-year senior returning, Dalton Wagner, going to help that offensive line. Sam Pittman revealed that on Monday. So it looks like, uh, you know, we're already setting up for, a, for next season for the Arkansas Razorbacks, but we got to finish this thing out because – all the goodwill that we've got, I'm not saying you're going to lose it if you lose to Missouri, but it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And the whole offseason, I think you're going to be smarting from this game. You're going to be second-guessing what the hell happened this weekend if you don't finish it off and don't have one of the best seasons, don't finish it right to have one of the best seasons in recent Arkansas history. I mean, it's all right there in front of you. You just got to go out there and seize it. And Barry Odom and company, you got all these transfers you added from Missouri. A lot of bad blood here back and forth. A lot of players, Arkansas players on the Missouri roster. This is, uh, you know, you, you may think Arkansas, you don't care. You don't call this a rivalry. I think in Missouri, this may be the game that uh, means the most for, to them all season. So I anticipate it's going to be a lot closer than this wide margin spread that we got. But, uh, you know, another good thing that's going to help Arkansas here is the fact that Traylon Burke's already back at practice. He's a little banged up, but, you know, Will Anderson, questionable hit there at the end of the game. It's not going to prevent Traylon Burks from finishing the, the season strong here against Arkansas. Sam Pittman talks about that, talks about K.J. Jefferson. I love this line. A lot of people had K.J. 14th in the SEC just like me. Not, not this podcast host but i'm just saying and uh sam Pittman on the state of this rivalry he, hell he thinks it's a rivalry also just what bannister and buyers have done i mean does that make you in recruiting give even closer looks to arkansas kids that well um yeah you know i probably um they're good players um but you know i can't really speak on what happened recruiting when it, when i wasn't here but um uh, uh, we, we don't want to let our good ones uh, leave the state and go play for especially uh, a team that uh, we would consider a, a rival game for us. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Uh, the nature of this is so fresh still, really. And can it become a, a big rivalry? Do you, do you sense that there's more to it now with Barry on your staff and these guys and all that? Well, I think so, you know, and obviously we have some players that, uh, you know, transferred here uh, from the University of Missouri. And, of course, Trey Williams came, but it wasn't, you know, necessarily from Missouri. It was from Houston here. Um, uh, but we – that probably has heated up the rivalry a little bit, you know. Um, anytime you have a trophy game, I think it it uh, elevates the rivalry as well. But we should be – you know, this should be it. We're close. Uh, the two schools are, are close. and. We have a trophy to play for and have a lot of respect for Missouri. Uh, but I, I like the, the fact that uh, we're trying to get this to be a rivalry game. Uh, obviously, rivalry games aren't any good if you uh, don't have two.
two separate winters every now and then. And uh, uh, it's good for the ones that win it all the time. But Missouri's beaten us several years in a row. And um, so it's probably a little bit more of a rival for us since we haven't we haven't been able to beat them. I don't know if you heard, but on Saturday, Grant said he would not have come back if, if it weren't for you. And we can't pull every player that came back, but I get the general sense that a lot of them wouldn't have come back if not for you and the coaching staff. What do you think of you know their point of view on why they came back? Well, I mean, we don't want to let them down. I mean, I think that's the the biggest thing. We, you know, when if somebody comes back, it's you know usually got a lot of reasons to it, but it's usually that they like the culture or the way things are going in the building. And at that point, once they did that, not only were they investing in us, it made our investment in them even greater um, because we didn't want to fail them. And um, obviously we've lost four games and all those things that we, we don't want to do. Um, but if we can win Saturday, we feel like, um, you know, in some shape or form, we've had a success uh, for our program. And, uh, Bottom line, it's very humbling that he would say that, but at the same time, um, it's just a higher investment for us when those kids decide to come back. His standard maybe for KJ in completions was 65%. KJ's at 66. Do you think he's merited some talk, you know, for next year? Best quarterback in the SEC, best quarterback in the country, one of the best. You think? Yeah, I don't know why not. I mean – He's sort of like me. They had him 14th in the league too, you know. Um, and I'm he way ahead of me. I get that, but uh, I think that's a driving. Uh, I think that's motivation for him. Uh, but if you notice the way he throws the ball right now versus what he did against Rice, you know, I'm I'm just talking about mecha mechanics. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to lose him. I mean, I think he's – I don't want to trade. Pretty good. Uh, on that last drive, when it was fourth and 11 at the 35 and you were originally going to punt and yeah. then you called timeout, some fans have emailed me and claimed that you overruled Bryles, that he wanted to punt, you didn't and all that. Can you explain what went on there? You want to know the truth? Yeah. All right. This is the truth. We had played such a good game, and we are down on the 35, and we're 14 down. And I go, if we don't make it, they're going to score again, and they're, you know, there's a chance they can score again and beat us by 21, and that's not going to be the telltale. And in that time, when I sent a punt team out there versus the time that I called timeout, I said, I ain't giving these kids a chance to win. And if I do this, they're going to hold it against me and I'm going to hold it against myself forever. No matter what the outcome is, we got to play to win. And that's exactly what happened. All right, flipping over to the other side. I mean, how could we forget SEC media days? This I've been tagged in this one left and right all day Monday, so I had to bring it back out. But uh, let's kick it over to Eli Drinkowitz. Remember, this is from SEC media days here in July, I think it was. He thinks it's a rivalry. Since joining the SEC, it's not, it doesn't seem like uh, Mizzou really has a rivalry uh, in the conference. If Oklahoma joins the SEC, um, would you be excited to kind of rekindle that rivalry? I, I kind of like the rivalry we got with Arkansas. I mean, I don't remember the last time they beat us, so I, I kind of like that one. And the battle line rivalry, I mean, it's pretty good for us. So, Crud, I think we'll just keep that one right now. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, respect Sam and, and, and everything he's doing with that program. He's obviously doing a tremendous job. I'm from the state, and uh, so that makes it a little bit more special and a little added incentive. So I'm not going to speculate about anything. Uh, just because y'all don't think it's a rivalry doesn't mean it ain't a rivalry. It means a whole heck of a lot to my household, and I know it means a whole heck of a lot to Barrett Bannister's household, and I know we like having that trophy at the end of the game. So I think we'll keep the one that the commissioner set for us. <laughs> Okay, Arkansas fans are pissed off. They've tagged Sam Pittman on this thing about 50 times just today, and that's not even uh, counting how many times they did it back in July. So, uh, But Sam, Eli Drinkowitz 
singing the same tune here on Monday. It's a great rivalry. He gives credit to Sam Pittman, saying that's his vote for SEC Coach of the Year, and it's hard to argue. I wouldn't necessarily have Sam Pittman number one, but he's right up there given uh, the turnaround in Arkansas, how competitive they've been for damn near every game they've played in this year outside of Georgia. So, But again, a lot on the line here. A lot on the line for the Missouri Tigers. I think they're playing with house money, a game I think they want more than any other, a game where they just got uh, that mental edge over the Arkansas Razorbacks. No one on this roster has ever lost to Arkansas. How will that play into this weekend? I don't know, but uh, I cannot wait to find out. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great rivalry. Obviously, there's uh, different uh, elements that play into it now. Obviously, uh, you know, we have two players on our team from Fayetteville and, and multiple players on our team from the state of Arkansas, which uh, adds to the intrigue. Uh, obviously, you know, our uh, uh, the former head coach here, Coach Odom, is the defensive coordinator. Uh, uh, former linebacker here, Michael Shears, the linebacker's coach. Um, um, Sam Carter used to be a QC here, now he's there. Um, and then obviously uh, Trey Williams, who is a, a graduate of the University of Missouri, uh, you know, has found his way to the University of Arkansas. He's from Columbia, uh, uh, you know, and, and is having a tremendous season. So excited for him to have the right fit and, and find and, and accomplish what he's wanting to accomplish there. Markel uh, Utzi, a guy who, again, who's a graduate from the University of Missouri, who is, you know, from the state of Little Rock, getting to play for his home state and, and having a, a successful season for them, uh, you know, is exciting for them. But when we play, it's going to be, um, you know, our team versus their team and, and trying to win that trophy. And it's, I, I don't think there's any ill will in, in this game uh, at all. I think it's a good old fashioned rivalry where you're trying to play for, for your state and your team. And, and uh, as a competitor, you know, when the game's over, you want to be successful. So. Okay, sorry. Um, how's Big Alabama and the defensive line coverage since you promoted him? Can you remember being involved in a game where there's so many people on each side that have, you know, like cross connections, the Arkansas folks have connections to Missouri and the Missouri folks have connections to either the university or the state of Arkansas? Yeah. Um, first off, I'll, I'll start with, uh, uh, have you ever been to the Alma Greenwood game? I mean, there's a lot of crossover connections there or the Springdale-Fayetteville game where people, you know, our rivalries, they eat at the same restaurants and go to the same places. Uh, or maybe the Auburn-Alabama uh, game there, Bob. I mean, that's that's kind of rivalries. That's what makes them special when there's so much interconnectedness and, and uh, so much, you know, intrigue. Uh, you know, I think about the Auburn-Alabama uh, game in 2010. I mean, uh, uh, Eric Smith, our, our uh, three-back, I mean, his brother was a walk-on at, at – uh, Alabama, so it, it made it intriguing. I remember, you know, we we weren't supposed to tell anybody any of the things we were doing because we were afraid it was going to leak to the other team, including the walk-on. So, I, you know, I've kind of been in those kind of rivalries. So that's what that's what I think is exciting about the one that we're creating here uh, with Arkansas and Mizzou, and and again the intrigue makes it even more special. You know, I think Sam Pittman is exactly what the University of Arkansas needed at the exact time that they needed it. And I think they did a tremendous job in making that hire. And, and uh, hats off to uh, the athletic director and uh, the group that was involved in that. Um, I don't think that there's, you know, I said it this morning, I think obviously to me, Sam uh, would be my vote for SEC Coach of the Year. And I think there's a lot of guys that are definitely deserving. I think Coach Heupel and Coach Beamer have done a tremendous job. Obviously, Coach Smart in being undefeated is is pretty remarkable. Coach Kiffin and what he's done at Ole Miss is, is certainly remarkable as well. But when you look at what uh, Sam has been able to do with that team, the staff he's hired, the, the, the players he's recruited, and the way that they're playing and, and kind of reinvigorated that state uh, for their football program, I, I don't know that anybody's done a better job. Um, he's a genuine person, a genuine leader. Um, he cares, and really nothing seems to rattle him. You know, they lost some coaches in the summer, um, and he went out and hired some tremendous coaches to replace him. You know, he hired Dal Loggins, a former player there, who's a, a tremendous offensive mind. You know, so I think he's he's very thoughtful in the way he's approached it and built it. Um, he's connected to the players in that that state, um, and and I think he's doing a really good job, and, and uh, he's got a very tough team to play against, which is uh, 
always uh, something to be respected. That's going to do it for this episode of the show. Kept it a little bit short. Uh, like I said, I had a couple things fall through. But Cousin Shane will be back on the next episode, be breaking down even more of these matchups. Who knows? We may have a Florida coach by the next time we record. We may have an LSU coach by the next time we record. We'll keep you posted on any and all news and notes and rumors and speculation and all that. We got a loaded weekend of SEC action, so just trying to crank this content out before we hit the holidays. Probably not going to do a Friday show I think what we're thinking is, uh, you know, we'll have one come out on Thursday, and that'll be the Pick'ems podcast. I think that's the plan as of now. But uh, we'll update that as we go along on the next episode. But I do appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by. Get you on the next one.